Huh? 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 Well, welcome back to another episode of Octo Reacts, featuring everyone's favourite eight-foot handsome reselling octopus, me, the disgruntled octopus. Hello! And today we're actually, uh, we were going to go on a grumpy granny elderly bashing video, <laughs> just reacting to one of her older videos. But as you would have seen in the little intro, a lot of people still aren't getting what, how eBay works as a corporation, is that... If you list things on eBay and you sell things on eBay, you need to pay fees on those things. So what I'm going to do today is basically be Octo versus the world. <laughs> so hopefully uh, drill into some of those people that, yes, that you know, selling on eBay is you know fraught with fees and they do nickel and dime you per se. However, it's just stock standard. So what we will do is we'll react quite quickly to Grumpy Granny's video. It should be a very quick one today. Hoping Grumpy Granny is well. I haven't spoken to her a while. Um, so by all means, yeah, slither over to her channel and give us some affection, give us some love and say hello to her on Instagram. I'm sure she'll like it. And we'll be back with the podcast probably next week at this stage here, yeah, because like I said, she hasn't been feeling too well. But without further ado, let's go. Well, hello again, boys and girls. It's your favourite grumpy granny from Groggy's Patch. And I am back once again to teach you a little something today about eBay. Well, someone's going to teach someone about eBay because a lot of people don't get it still. So I've had a couple of days on Depop, but <clears throat> I have noticed in a few of the Facebook groups and on Instagram and other places that there is a little bit of whinging and whining about how much eBay fees are. And people are saying... So this, this video came out about oh, two months ago, I think it was. So it's, it's, <laughs> it hasn't changed. And, yeah, this is not to have a go at anyone in particular. But when you sign up for an eBay account, and by virtue you have because, you know, you are selling on eBay, you need to read the fee structure. You need to read the terms and conditions just to see what they can do. And, and another one that I will bring up later is that I did see something in a Facebook group asking if they could retrospectively uh, remove the ad fees, uh, the promoted listing fees on a, an item they sold because they promoted it 35% uh, that sold the item. eBay charged them, just say, $35. Uh, now they don't want to pay that promoted standard fee. So they basically wanted to see if there's any way that eBay will reverse that charge. <sighs> it's just not getting any better. And, <laughs> and I think a lot of people just need to realise that you know, it, it is part and parcel of, you know, selling on an online platform or any platform. Um, yeah, so like I said, just be very mindful, read the terms and conditions, just read the fee structure. You know, you're more than welcome to reach out to me personally or Grumpy Granny as well. Um, yeah, we're more than happy to discuss it with you. But, but please, please, please be aware that if you are promoting or if you are selling, especially international, um, yeah, the fees, yeah, we'll go into it later that they can't afford to do international shipping anymore because it's too expensive and they're paying all this money in fees. I think what it is is that people don't understand the fee structure and that is what we're going to deep dive into today because I want you to understand. And the thing is that... For a very annoying old lady, she's quite helpful, but don't tell her I said that. Yeah, you do pay more for international... Um, sales with fees but in general i've never made a loss so what she's getting to and i think she does touch on a little bit later as well is that when you sell internationally and i think you sell domestically as well is that basically ebay calculates the fees off the the entire price um this goes for promoted fees this goes for your standard listing fees so you yeah, know obviously if you're selling to the states you're selling to to international like europe and all these different things you have sales tax and you'll have like that which is a kind of a gst tax for those over there um so that might be up to 30 40 dollars depending on the price of your you know your sale and ebay will actually calculate that as part of the fee structure so you will be paying your standard fees on that and also your promoted listing fees so just be mindful of the fact is that if you are selling you know high sell through rate items or something that goes quite quickly overseas i probably wouldn't promote as high um but just like i said know your market know your fees and we can go from there it's always come out in my benefit even when I sell it for the item for a lower, low, low, even when <laughs> it's good to see that I'm not the only one that trips over my tongue. But what it comes down to is that, you know, potentially, you know, if look, the case that I showed you, if, you know, at the start of the video was a $10 item, is that maybe it might be worth, you know, pushing past that and saying, hey, well, look, I need to start selling from $20 items and all these different things. As long as you're making a profit, you know, and I agree 100% with Geelong Flipper, he's made in previous posts, is that, 
you know, depending on your, you know, I suppose you, the, the part of your journey that you're on, you know, obviously if you're, if you're selling hundreds of thousands of dollars on eBay, you're probably not wanting to send that, sell that $10 items. However, if you're quite new to eBay um, and you're quite distraught in the sense of a financial sense, you probably need to make sure that you understand what the fee structure is and sell $10 items, you know, make 2 or $3 profit and rinse and repeat. I want to sell the actual item for a lower price internationally, generally, well, always, my end result is better for me if I sell it internationally. So let's get in and have a little bit of a look. I'm just going to pause and bring up the screen because it's important we go to the right screens for this. Right, here we are. We are, what you need to do is just go into your orders and pull up one of your listings so that you can have a look at your own. And then you'll be able to work it out. I am. I can't show you. Well, she sells books of seventy dollars. Um, someone Jeez. else's. I mean, I can't show you what yours look like. I can only show you what mine look like. So I've pulled up this book that I showed you yesterday that I sold, which was the Arabic English dictionary that I shipped off to America. And what you can see up here. I'm just going to pause Grumpy Granny there for a second and I'll bring up one of my listings. Give me two seconds and I apologise in advance. I should have been more prepared than this, but I did originally have up the the uh, the, email, the eBay fee structure. I'll quite quickly put it here as well. I will put this in the description field. So this is the basic little variable fee for Australia. Like the US, UK, I will put the links in for that as well. So if you're coming from those countries, yeah, by all means, the links will be there to have a quick squeeze of it. But most categories you're looking at 13.4 percent of the sale price so that's without promoted listing so if you're promoting at six percent yeah you pay that 13.4 percent and you're also paying a separate value of six percent on on the total so your 13.4 percent doesn't come off then they charge you six percent so for example your um yeah your item might sell for a hundred dollars so you're paying thirteen dollars forty in in fees plus that 30 cents plus gst and all these other fees that come into it uh, then on top of that, you'll pay $6 as well if you promote at 6%. So that's the generalist um, way of looking at it. Um, like I said, don't really take too much value into that. But I will bring up something I just want to bring up in a second. Um, I'll stop sharing that screen. And uh, I'll promise, uh, where are we? No, it's lost. We won't worry about it. <laughs> I was just going to bring up the. Uh, oh no, it's still there. We see. We we are. Um, I, pr <laughs> I promise we're more organised than this. Um, orders. Here we go. That's why I couldn't see it. So very similar to what Grumpy Granny was just showing you here. Here's an item that I sold today. I listed it today. Um, it was a very high in demand DVD. It's an animation DVD. It's gone over to the States. So I listed it for seventy nine ninety nine. I promote all my DVDs at fifteen percent. However, this one was a quite a high sell-through rate. And I hate when people say it's a more than 100% sell-through rate. There's nothing more than 100%. <laughs> so this is 100% sell-through rate. Um, I was the only one listed, so I was going to list it at 99 but I thought, well, the last one sold for about $54. So I listed it for $79.99 plus post. Um, and because it's a high sell-through rate or in-demand item, I only promote it 5%. So after all transaction fees and, sorry, after selling the item, getting $21 postage to the United States, basically the sale tax of $6.48, the, the order total comes to $107.47. So eBay's calculated that yeah, the percentage of their fees on $107.47, um, regardless if they're taking the sell tax out. So that $107.47 comes down to $80.92. So that's after my 5% set, uh, standard fee, um, which is like I'm saying is that they've actually worked it off that $107.47, even though I've only really <laughs> promoted it at yeah, that 8%, uh, sorry, the $80. Um, they've also charged it on top of the, on the postage, as you can see there as well. So I paid about $16 or $17 in postage. So I walked away with about $60, yeah, $65 if around, that, yeah, around that place. So this is what you need to be very mindful of. I only paid a dollar for this item. So um, like I said, I listed it earlier today and it sold this afternoon quite quickly. So be mindful of what you're selling, what your fee structures are, because I could have easily paid a dollar, you know, sold it for $3 or $4 and actually lost money in that transaction. So just be very, very mindful of what's going on in that respect. So I will stop sharing that screen now and we'll go back to Grumpy Granny. The buyer paid. So the buyer paid $69.31 for the item. 
$75 postage, and they had to pay U.S. sales tax of $5.98, which eBay collects for the U.S. government. The thing to remember, though, is when they are calculated, that all adds up to $150.29. And even though down here you can see where eBay takes the sales tax back off the amount, the thing to remember is when they are actually calculating our fees, they're calculating it off this total figure. So Grumpy Granny just said what I've pretty much summed up myself. So because I can tell, like I said, the transaction was $107.91, whatever it was, and the promoter listing was at 5% because they charged $5.91, whatever it worked out to be. That's a lot more than that initial base rate of $80. So when they work out their variation listings, or the variable listings, and they work out their promoted listings, they actually work it off the entirety of that transaction. If you're in Australia, I highly recommend that you sign up for My Post Business because a lot of the discount you get from even from a band one or band two perspective um, that when you do ship um, internationally, you do save a lot and you recoup your, your fees from that perspective. Which is, you know, is it fair? Is it not? Who knows? But it is what it is. That is. And that's exactly right. I find a lot of people that, you know, they, they constantly talk about is it fair or it's not fair and all these different things. And it comes down to the terms and conditions and what you've actually signed up for is that if you don't agree with being charged you know fees and sales tax and postage and all these different things just leave ebay you know just go to depop go to macari go to all these different places i'm pretty sure macari um in the states is actually charging the buyer for the fees now so you're quite <laughs> you're quite good in that respect but the fact of the matter is is that when you sign up for the terms and conditions you agree to them you're selling items you're agreeing once again and you can't feign ignorance or you can't you know, feign disgust or you can't crack the sads because you've basically, you know, you're using that platform. They're an organisation. They've got to service sh shareholders. Um, yes, they don't do a lot well, but however, they give you access to probably a couple of hundred million people to look at your listings and potentially buy it. So, you know, I don't know what Leanne paid for this item, but, you know, for a, a dollar DVD to get $66 back um, after fees and postage, all those different things, that's all going into the Japan fund. So, like I said, it's quite a good deal. I'm, I'm, you know, it's just the fact of the matter. It's what happens. And so you need to understand that. So now let me, uh, it's just a bit difficult because I have to. Oh, she's putting me to sleep again. Jeez, she's been, she's been missing in action for a, <laughs> for a week and she still um, puts me to sleep. Do, do a couple of things. So I'm going to pause and bring up. So when we do click on see more details, this is the screen that comes up fee, which is in there and find that out. Nope, she's gone quiet again. Right here. Oh, no, here she goes. Then we can see the final value for 9%, regular final value for 5 cents. Percent. Yeah, so what'll... And then there is... I'm just going to skip through this video quite quickly. Just get to the points where I, th I think I want to reinforce a point. So I will link Grumpy Granny's video down below. And if you're new to eBay, you don't really understand the fee structure, this video is fantastic. Even, even for our international audience, I, I would highly recommend that you go check this video out because Leanne's quite good at <laughs> breaking these things down, you know, showing some patience. She also has a Discord server. By all means, yeah, you're more than welcome to join that. I think she's got links in her profile, um, her Instagram, her YouTube page, and all those different things. I'm not particularly au fait with how Discord works, so <laughs> I'll leave that up to her. So, but yeah, like I said, that you need to be very mindful of uh, what the fee structures are. Look at just look at the fees. Yeah, you know, before you list an item, just work off maybe fifteen percent. Um, plot before you get to your promoted listing fee. So realistically, um, you know, it, it's kind of a choose your own adventure. And I, I'm, I'm finding a lot of people reaching out, on, especially on Facebook and all these different things, asking what level people are promoting at. That's, I suppose that, you know, if you're quite new uh, to the eBay platform, that's something very, it's not so much a closely guarded secret, but that's how promoted listing fees increase because originally started everyone was 
you know, promoting at 1%, then they raised it to 2%. Now you're probably looking at people who are promoting closer to 5%, depending on the category, you know, used clothes, um, I'd list at 15%, um, DVDs are 15%, those really high saturated markets are 15%. Video games, I normally do about 10%, Skylanders are 15%, all these different things, but my cost of goods are so low, I'm more than happy to, you know, promote at that, at that rate, uh, just to clear them out the door. So like I said, I don't want to be holding stock for a long term. I've said numerous times that idealistically, um, I price things either at market or just below, and probably depending on the sell-through rate of that item, is I want things to go within that day or within that week. Uh, that's my mindset, so I can recycle that money and push it out further out. So with Japan, I suppose, lack of a better term, is that I started with ten dollars uh, in my little Japan challenge to you know to beat my daughter over to Japan because she annoyed me, <laughs> but now I'm up to about four thousand dollars in stock, but just primarily through yeah those high promotions, high you know low cost of goods, and just constantly turning over, turning over, turning over. So like I said, is that promoted listings and fees aren't necessarily a bad thing if your cost of goods are low enough you can actually subsidize it um but yeah like i said the, the end game is to sell these products and the quicker you sell it the quicker you get more money in your pocket you can recycle it into new products new items and all those different things and you know and get some money in the bank there's no use, you know your item sitting around for 12 to 18 months not doing anything holding up the cash flow so just be mindful of that if you want to go promote listings the 30 percent, and then there is your gst before Grumpy Granny goes back on, so with the fifteen percent, that's actually dynamic. So if the sky limit, that's the maximum of dynamic. Sorry. So the way I normally do it is that I'll set it at a base dynamic rate of fifteen percent. So if the daily rate for Skylanders is eleven point nine, uh, it'll only charge me eleven point nine. So when I do rough calculations, when I work at, you know, where, how much potential return on investment or property uh, a, a thing is, I normally subtract you know thirty percent just as a, a rule of thumb. So that's how it explains it for an international one. So I'm just going to pause again and bring up a screen for a, 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 a for a normal. I don't know. We, we, <laughs> we have some problems talking, and yeah, Leanne's a lot better, more photogenic, and a lot more um, more comfortable in the camera in front of the, the post to myself. But yeah, even that she trips up and stuff. So <laughs> it happens to the best of us. Local sale. And this is the same for whether you're in whichever country you're in, you can still go to this same screen and find out the information. All right, right. Zoom it up. so the screen I'm going to show you this time is a local sale and it's actually an organic sale, that, so there's no promoted listings on this one. And this is a VHS video that I sold uh, for 15 Oh, she's getting into it. But what I was going to say that she sold the item for $15. They look like they paid $9.99 postage, which is a $24.99 um, sale price. And after post, oh, sorry, after fees, so she hasn't charged, she hasn't got free, uh, postage taken out of this, which we probably, depending where the item's going, anywhere between nine to, oh, sorry, yeah, nine to about $12 for, for Leanne. Um, she gets what, $21.39 off it. So. That's for, just for a um, organic listing. So there's no promoter listings in that one. So what I will do is I'll bounce around because we don't want to have to keep <laughs> watching the same thing. So. Dollars plus the nine ninety. The next one, and then we will go straight into because there's no ad transaction fee. We're just going to go straight into. So the, the transaction fees will actually come up on the order page. So it will come up as the yeah the transaction fee for that would be maybe. Yeah, the item sold price would just say if it's $100 and after fees came out, it's $80. It'll say that. And then all of a sudden, on top of that, we'll say the ad standard fee, which will be just $5, $6, depending on what the, the standard rate is that you're promoting at. Showing what the net behind by the 11 dollars oh, $3.20 yeah. $3. fees are high. But what if you might think the fee buy yeah. thing, buy thing. The Ooh, point yeah, I want to make with the, the breakdown of the fee, 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 the breakdown of the fees, and it makes it much. How better than that is the um, the Octo wraps better than the <laughs> the Grumpy Granny Levi wrap. So do so so myself. That was pretty good actually. Much easier for you to actually work down, work to a you know fine thing. The point I want to make with this is, you might think the fees are high, but what if you were trying to sell on in a brick and mortar store or you're paying a shop 
commission to sell your things. You're never going to escape being at having to sell something. I mean, yes, you can still sell blah, 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 sell stuff on Facebook Marketplace. So in Australia, Facebook Marketplace is free. We don't get charged fees like they do in the States. I'm not too sure about the UK and other territories, but yeah, definitely in the States that they get charged some sort of Facebook Marketplace fee. We, we don't. So it's in essence, it's free for us at this stage and we facilitate our own postage. So, you know, hypothetically, if Leanne is selling something and I reach out to her and say, hey, will you ship to Canberra? Um, we normally just facilitate off platform. So she'll agree with it. Give me a price and I'll pay by PayPal or bank deposit and all those different things. Um, always pay by PayPal, don't pay by bank deposit. Um, but what she was making, she makes a valid, valid point for brick and mortar. And I do see this get thrown around a lot and it almost gets to the point where people roll their eyes because they're like, oh, here we go again. You know, people are whinging about brick and mortar and all these different things. I, I had an interview, a part of my uh, business building um, series that I'm doing last night. I had an inaugural episode where I interviewed um, Jackie. She's a part of the, uh, the Loot and the Boot um, designer toy business that she's actually um, doing at the moment. And she's actually running off Shopify, right? So she's not working off uh, eBay and I will be working off Shopify as well. And yeah, Shopify is just as bad. You know, it's quite less on in regards to the base fees. I don't know what the base fees are yet, but we will get to that later into a later episode. But the fact of the matter is if you want, you know, <laughs> Um, you know, quality add-ons in Shopify, you're paying subscription models for these. So you are paying for every little things on top that you want to do. So basically to run a Shopify account, you may be paying 40, 50, 60, 70 dollars a month before you even make sales. So this is something you need to be mindful of as well is that, you know, not like a lot of people say, well, I'll just run my own Shopify account. You have to run fees. You have to pay, obviously, Shopify fees. You have to pay, you know, direct traffic to it so basically if you aren't building organically um, you have to run facebook ads google ads and all those different things to that store so it is quite comparable um like i said ebay is probably the better deal and it really comes down to make sure you're actually sourcing low um you know a lot of people say all the different things i've said in numerous times i'm happy to pay up as long as i can get a price for it so you know, for example, I'm actually selling a Game Boy game at the moment. I paid $220 for it. However, I got it listed for $600. And that's one of the cheaper uh, one of the cheaper listings on eBay. So I'm happy to pay for that. And I haven't promoted that because that game is so rare that collectors will be looking for it. Uh, so I don't have to push it out because there's only about two or three listings. So like I said, you just need to be mindful of what's what's out there be mindful of what the fee structure is um there's no use whinging about it <laughs> like or you know i have seen previously that you know ebay posts or facebook market or facebook group posts where they're talking about class action against ebay and all these different things basically ebay will ban your account ebay will kick you off the platform yeah you, know, you need to play by the rules it's their sandbox yeah by all means if you've got a couple hundred million dollars create your own profile create your own business um <laughs> platform such as like ebay to compete with but the, the fact of the matter is it really comes down to knowing the fee structure, knowing um, what you what you can sell the item for. So you obviously check out the sold listings um, and just check out the uh, the fee structure. Make sure that yeah, you know, if, if it's a highly saturated category, you might need to promote it. Um, or otherwise, if it's a one-off thing that people are you know, strong in demand, like that DVD I showed you a little bit earlier, is that you really don't need to promote these things. We'll promote them very low. Yes, with no fees or other places with no fees. But it's very difficult and they've got to be local so the person can come and pick the stuff up for you, from you. Everywhere has fees. And going back to um, what we're talking about with Facebook Marketplace as well, if you are you know, using you know, PayPal as the platform to you know, do transactions, for example, if I send Leanne money to buy a certain thing that she's got in stock, there's still fees being paid on that transaction. So Facebook Marketplace, and like she said just then, unless you're local and lands in the middle of nowhere, um, you are paying fees. So just be mindful of that. Now, just so you, you've got an idea, I've done a little bit of a, I, I sort of keep a bit of a track of my fees and what my overall average. Yeah, we'll have, <laughs> we'll move a little bit forward because, um, yeah, you get the general gist yes. of it. Now it's at about 23%. Wherever I put it, 16 percent so even though i'm paying 23 percent for some 14 percent for others overall it works out at 16 percent which is slightly less than what i'm paying on depop which yeah so depop you're paying i think it's 10 percent plus you're paying a, a promoted listing of eight percent as well to boost your items but what it really comes down to like i was saying is that depending on the category depending on what the thing is yeah you, know, you probably want to throw a rough figure out like i said i normally work off the rules of third um so basically i'll 
yeah, a third of the item uh, for basically potentially <laughs> for fees, um, a third of the items, you know, all these different things come into place as well. But if you take a third of it off, is a general rule of thumb, hopefully you aren't paying 33% fees for, for an item. Um, however, like I said, that you can always get a gauge of a decent profit margin from there. Which is 18% for a boosted sale. So it all balances out. And the thing is, I've never lost out on an international shipping. And those fees, but the, I, I still say it, the fees are what they are. And if we want to be online resellers, we just have to suck it up and go with the flow. And that, that's exactly right. And I think Leanne's hit the nail on the head there is a lot of people, I think what I've said numerous times is that it's not healthy to, you know, to stay in, you know, Facebook groups and all those different things. It's always, yeah, and I've said numerous times, it's well to go in there, ask a question, get the answer, and then get back out. Um, you don't want to dwell because you start, you know, absorbing other everyone else's problems and all those different things. And, um, yeah, you'll start seeing <laughs> eBay from a negative light and all these different things. Use it as a platform. Use it as a... Yeah, a means to an end. So the simple fact is, if I put this item on here, it sells, I get some capital or I get some money back to obviously reinvest that or pay bills or whatever you want to do from eBay. Like from a side hustle, it's not too bad. But like I'm saying is that you really need to work out what your cost of goods are. Don't buy, you know, $5 DVDs and th say, well, I'm, yeah, I'm going to list them for $9.99 with free post. You're going to run up very quickly in the negatives. So be very mindful. And what we'll do then, we'll actually wrap it up today, but I will put the description link in with the, um, with the like I said, the fee structure and all those different things, just to go through. Um, I will put in Australia, the US and the UK. If you're outside of that, by all means, put in the comment section below what you think of the fee structure. And if you think eBay... Um, should increase their fees or you know, basically their variable fee to get rid of promoter listing fees or they should basically reduce the the variable fee, the, the variable fee and obviously you know increase promoter listing fees and all these different things um so realistically from my perspective i'd rather see a 15 percent flat fee uh and then just piss off <laughs> the promoted listing feed but anyway like if you do like this kind of content make sure you press like uh subscribe and comment and below but otherwise we'll see you next time bye